Jin Dobry, and welcome to this last session of ISS. Um, my name is Jacob, and I will be chairing this session, um, which is called Sports and Play for Animals and Humans. So we have quite a diverse set of users for interactive systems, but also quite a diverse set of application scenarios. And we're a bit short on time, so um, without further ado, we're going to go to the first talk. Um, so Mario is going to tell us something about how people uh, can learn to motorbike, uh, not motorbike, mountain bike. <laughs> But nowadays, with all the e-motorbikes, might as well be mountain bikes as well. <laughs> so how can we help novice people um, to learn this and to help them uh, gain their balance or regain their balance during mo uh, mountain biking? Thank the you, stage Jacob. is yours. Thank you for the lovely introduction. Uh, I hope I won't confuse like the motorcycling and mountain biking, but um, should be fine. Um, my name is uh, Marit Bentvelze and I'm from Utrecht University. And I'm presenting our work on behalf of my co-authors, uh, Mark Berendse and Pavel Wozniak. So in recent years, mountain biking has become increasingly popular, especially during the pandemic, we saw a steep increase of the demand for mountain bikes um, and for trails. Uh, so in the US alone, I think we've saw like uh, five as many trails in, in the last year compared to uh, the years before. Um, and the sales numbers of mountain bikes also almost doubled. Um, so mountain biking allows people to connect to nature in combination with cardiovascular exercise. However, the complex terrain of uh, in which mountain biking, mountain biking takes place um, demands a wide variety of skills. Uh, from riders. So mountain bikers need to find a right posture, um, need the correct stance, need to brake in time, uh, while at the same time maintaining their stability. Um, and this high demand of skills uh, leads to a steep learning curve for novices, uh, which can often lead also to falls and injuries. Uh, so our aim with, with this study was therefore to explore the ways in which uh, interaction technology can assist novices in, uh, well, in mountain biking. I think. <laughs> I think something's wrong with the pointer still, but thank you. Um, so to our knowledge, this is the first paper in HCI that explores how technology can be used for mountain biking, uh, yet our field uh, does offer some interesting works that look into everyday cycling. Uh, for instance, the work by Matvienko et al. looked at, uh, like, uh, focused on child cyclists um, who often struggle uh, well, to, to cycle uh, safely within uh, traffic uh, because of the, the perceptual motor abilities that kids have. So to facilitate this road safety, uh, the authors of this paper used multimodal warning signals to increase the awareness and the prime action uh, in critical situations. Um, next to safety, also uh, studies looked into the navigation options that you have when you're uh, on your bike. Uh, so the study by Danku et al. looked at um, how you could navigate a map while you're cycling. Um, and they compared uh, using a map on just a regular smartphone with uh, using a projector that they uh, mounted on top of the, of the bike uh, and that projected your map in front of you while you were cycling. Um, another example comes from Wozniak et al, who developed um, like a handle that you have on your bike with which you can control your smartphone. So then you can keep both hands safely on the steering wheel and then, uh, or sorry, on the, uh, on the steer, and then you can still control your smartphone. Even though interactive technologies are useful uh, or are are useful in regular cycling contexts, uh, we note that mountain biking requires a different type of technological support. Um, in contrast to everyday cyclists, uh, mountain bike riders tend to push the boundaries of their capacity, uh, riding increasingly different, uh, different and challenging trails while still improving their skills. So these aspects are all part of the thrill of mountain biking. And we therefore argue that they're uh, probably essential to the mountain biking experience. Um, and currently, no studies have explored how technology can support mountain bikers in developing such technical skills. Um, to address this gap, our work therefore explores how interactive technology can aid novice mountain bikers, even though this <laughs> 
picture might not show a, a novice, uh, but you get the idea probably. Um, the design process of empty balance involved several steps and iterations. Uh, so our inquiry began with conducting interviews with uh, mountain bike coaches to identify the key areas that our system should address. Um, and three challenges for novices uh, showed up uh, during these, uh, these interviews. Um, novices often struggle with keeping their balance uh, while maintaining a correct posture. And also the lack of feedback uh, possibilities makes it difficult to uh, acquire the technical skills needed for mountain biking, as you're often dependent on uh, professional coaches, which are not always available. Um, through the interviews, we then uh, constructed a set of design requirements for empty balance. Um, so from a functional perspective, uh, the system should be wireless, uh, non-restrictive to, uh, to the range of motion, uh, while at the same time being compact, lightweight, and durable. Um, and from an interaction perspective, uh, the system should give uh, feedback uh, post hoc as well as in real time. Uh, while the real-time option should be unobtrusive in order to avoid uh, jeopardizing safety caused by distraction. Um, so all in all, uh, we designed empty balance to support users both in correct posture as well as maintaining balance. Um, this brought us uh, to the next challenge, um, how to collect the balance data. So we decided to uh, collect the directional balance information with IMU sensors, which is in line with previous work. Uh, and we used the XSense.2 um, IMU environment uh, into empty balance, seeing that these are light and small uh, and wireless and have been designed specifically for healthcare and, uh, and sports. Um, each IMU sensor also has like the, the processor embedded that handles the sampling, um, calibration, and integration of the, the 3D uh, orientation. To calculate uh, the user's balance from that sensor input, we followed the approach by Redfield et al., who studied the motion of mountain biking dynamics. I will show a short video uh, demonstrating somewhat how we, we calculated this. So the user's center of mass is calculated by tracking backwards from the bike dot. And the center of mass then defines the user's current balance. The optimal balance is defined by a cylindrical zone, which changes depending on the bike orientation. So the system continuously checks if the current balance is in within the optimal balance zone. And if not, the feedback is applied towards the desired direction of the current balance. Which brings us uh, to the next challenge, uh, how to convey this feedback. So we investigated tactile, visual and auditory modalities uh, for real-time feedback solutions. Uh, as these are the most common options used in, uh, within the HCI research field. Um, and we considered auditory modalities to be less suitable in the context of mountain biking, as it tends to be too obtrusive and distracting, which in the context of mountain biking can be very dangerous, of course. Uh, this is why we decided to focus on textile and visual modalities. Uh, and we therefore defined three modalities uh, to give feedback to the user about their position on the bike and balance. Uh, we used one tactile uh, feedback mode, uh, which we called VTF. Um, and then there's the visual directional feedback, the VDF, uh, and the visual position feedback. So two uh, visual feedback modes and one um, tactile. There's another video of Everything Works showing the differences. So we developed two dev devices to enable real-time balance feedback. One device is an augmented running belt providing vibro-tactile feedback around the waist. 
The other is a visual feedback device, which uses an LED strip attached to the helmet. Both devices indicate the direction in which riders have to shift their mass in order to be, remain balanced. So the vibro tactile fe feedback uses the belt to provide feedback around the user. And the visual directional feedback indicates uh, the feedback with two colors and patterns. And finally, the, vis the visual positional feedback uses solely patterns to convey balanced feedback. And this is uh, what the final prototype uh, looked like on, uh, on a participant. Um, so in order to evaluate empty balance, we conducted a within subject experiment uh, with repeated measures. Uh, we had 20 participants uh, who we asked to complete the course that we set out in a local forest uh, four times, one for each, once for each of the following conditions. Uh, so we had a base condition where they did not receive real-time feedback. Uh, they only saw later on in the app how they performed uh, in their balance. Um, then they did the trail again with fibro tactile feedback uh, without like the, the post hoc feedback. Um, then the VDF and then the VPF. Um, and we measured several things. Um, we used six measures uh, to evaluate the system. Um, four of these were automatically measured by the empty balance system, which were balance performance, balance deviation, the response time and the task completion time. Um, and balance awareness uh, was expressed as a percentual value uh, which indicates how uh, long a participant has been in balance state uh, over the total ride time. So the empty balance system deemed a participant to be in balance with, uh, when their uh, center of mass is within a desired threshold, what we set at uh, 50 uh, centimeters, which was in line with previous studies. Um, balance deviation is then the average deviation of the participant uh, from that balance threshold measured in centimeters and expressed as a cumulative moving average. Um, and response time denotes then the average recovery time of a participant going from the unbalanced state back to the balanced state. Uh, next to these, we also uh, measured uh, balance awareness uh, and perceived task load for which we use the questionnaire uh, after, the, uh, uh, after each of the um, iterations in the, in the experiment. Um, so balance awareness was a score on a 10 point Likert scale um, where participants stated how conscious they were of their balance during the trail uh, with scores ranging from co completely unaware to fully aware. Um, and the task load was defined, uh, was determined by using the task load index, which is an assessment tool that allows for quantifying and analyzing the workload required to complete a task. So what do our findings show? Um, well, our study showed that adding additional feedback to the mountain bike ride experience, unfortunately, did not lead to significant improvements in uh, balance performance or the time in which participant uh, responded to terrain changes. So what these images show is that there is a significant difference between two of the conditions, but that was mostly because of uh, the visual uh, the VPF condition uh, just, well, performing uh, extremely low in comparison to the others. Um, and then the balance deviation also showed that the VPF uh, did significantly worse than the other conditions. But when you compare like the post hoc feedback with uh, the tactile feedback, uh, then there wasn't a significant uh, difference in that. Um, so therefore we can observe that VPF uh, is a suboptimal solution. Uh, which suggests that um, future systems that feature real-time visual feedback uh, for dynamic solutions should use directional encoding, which was present in the VDF, but not in the VPF. So it was mostly because the VPF uh, and sometimes also the VDF just confused participants. Um, 
our study did show that all versions of empty balance provided the user with a significantly increased subjective perception of balance awareness, which suggests that when using empty balance, um, the bikers felt more in control of their bodies. And the qualitative results from our study uh, show that this state was uh, desirable and led to satisfaction in uh, using the system. Uh, so in light of these findings, uh, future systems for body awareness in sports can focus on providing an increased uh, feeling of awareness, even if it doesn't uh, directly link to performance, as this also leads to a more satisfying uh, um, journey in becoming more proficient in mountain biking. Um, so we recognize that our systems and study are subject to certain uh, limitations. First, we remarked that the uh, study was conducted on a single trail and the trail wasn't very challenging. So a lot of the like more uh, exciting jumps in mountain biking or the, the difficult trails, um, that, that's not where the empty balance system was evaluated. And that was mostly to ensure participant safety, of course. Uh, but that did limit uh, the study uh, and the evaluation of empty balance. Um, and we recognized that our study had an exploratory character. Uh, it was tested in a single instance of use, and it would be interesting to also see how empty balance can be utilized in regular training um, and after, um, well, using it more often, it would also be interesting to see how uh, expert coaches would evaluate uh, the performance of participants, uh, as these were now not involved in the evaluation. Um, to conclude, um, we hope that this first exploration um, inspires more developments in building interactive systems uh, for mountain biking, but also contributes further insight into understanding feedback design in ACI for sports. Thank you. Thank you very much, Marit. And I will use my position as a session chair and exploit this to ask a first question. And I need to ask you about the part where you talked about learning and helping people, um, like novices, learn uh, mountain biking. It seems to be very difficult. Um, and what I want to know or what I want to, to comment on is basically, um, since in the end your results showed a bit that they, there was no um, objective performance improvement, as to say, so no of, of their balance, right? Mm -hmm. um, and in a case, you could say, oh, they were somehow reliant on the feedback, and then the feedback told them what to do. So you could ask, argue, they are, weren't really learning how to ride the mountain bike. What's your take on this? Well, it's an interesting uh, uh, idea. Um, I do think sometimes um, when you're learning, I think reflection often plays an important role. And I think um, while you're uh, cycling your, on your mountain bike, the real-time feedback can help you with reflection in action. So it can help you to uh, become aware of your position on the bike and uh, the balancing challenges that you face uh, while you're riding your bike. So I think the combination ultimately between uh, post hoc feedback and real time feedback uh, can support users in becoming more proficient in mountain biking. I think that's also um, when I was going through your paper, I also found one quote from a participant, by the way, I think some mentioning along the lines that felt like an extension of when I was like going down the hill and then there was a vibration feedback uh, as far as I remember um, nudging me into a certain direction and maybe just another quick question from my side um, how would we could we translate this in sort of like an active mode right so like you combine like you have to the post hoc feedback on the one side you have this feedback that's been given um, <clears throat> while you're going down the hill but could it rather be also like an assistive system like think of a, a car or like maybe there's something for motorbikes as well, um, where it not only nudges you with vibration feedback, but actively tries to steer you. And actively try to steer you, you mean in the direction of the trail or how do you mean the, or in the learning? Um, so what I'm trying to say is like having a system that, well, steers your, steers your bike in a way, like you have the handle on the front side and maybe you could even, I don't really know how to change the balance of the bike, but mm, 
shifting weights, like you have weights on your bike and they shift, so they actively try to change the balance. Yeah, I am wondering though if you would then still experience the same joy in mountain biking, as I think this is one of the challenges that create like this mountain biking experience, uh, because you're actively trying to challenge yourself in, in cycling the more advanced trail sometimes and i'm not sure if a bike that would uh actively support you well, it could be maybe interesting in the learning part but i think in the end it's something like the the side wheels that you have on your bike when you're a child and they can be very convenient but in the end you really want to cycle it yourself so i think that's the that would be the main difference maybe. yeah so figuring that's out basically having an assistance system at the start but knowing when to reduce the amount and then in the end, because I totally agree with you, you want to experience the joy of it and having a sense of achievement that you can do it on your own. Still no questions online. Are there questions from the audience in here? I'm sure all of you have uh, ridden a bike before. Mountain bikers, anybody? Go ahead, unmute yourself. Thank you for the presentation. Uh, I just want uh, to ask, is it uh, possible to uh, imagine a system where maybe like for new cars, you have detectors and you will have a step, a step ahead feedback. Like for example, when you have an obstacle, we have something like a haptic feedback that uh, takes you aware that you will uh, maybe have a tree uh, uh, in front of you or something like this. Yeah, I think that, yeah, I think that would be very cool. If we could do something like that. I'm, I'm wondering, though, if the unpredictability of a track in a forest that's it's also constantly changing, how that would uh, well be fast enough in the, uh, the analysis of the environment. But I think that would be very cool to explore as well. More questions from the audience? Then one last shot from me. Can this be used for motorbikes as well? <laughs> If you cycle at a very low speed, then it might be a good idea. Thank you very much, Maurit. You're welcome. Thank you.